Any word? Okay, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. First, the Sally coordinates for the press conferences today. Coordinates are 11993.5 vertical, SES-113, 14K slot D is in Delta 9. Also a reminder that flash photography and video uh, Videography is not allowed here in the interview room. And if, when you ask a question, we please identify yourself and the uh, media outlet you are representing. Uh, we will open up the, the uh, today's press conference with uh, an opening statement from Coach Lloyd. Uh, you know, great job by our guys. I'm super proud of them. You know, we've, you know, we're in this game as a program last year, and, and, and we don't assume or take anything for granted. So I, I was really proud of how we responded because, you know, I, I know sitting in your guys' seat, you know, you, you, you guys like the drama and you like all that stuff that comes with this tournament. But, you know, there's another side of it, and, and it's the players and the coaches who have to actually live it and feel it. And, uh, you know, we, we, 
you know, a lot of us are pretty tunnel vision and don't have, you know, besides our families, a lot else in our life. So, so we feel the emotions and um, for our guys to overcome that today and, and, you know, we got off to a decent start and they made a big run at us and then we kind of settled in and took control from there. So really proud. Okay, we'll open up the questions for the student athletes, please. <clears throat> Yeah, Tommy, Steve Rivera, all sports, Tucson.com. Uh, can you talk about the importance of the three-pointers? I think it was a school record for the NCAA tournament, one. And two, how important it was to get them out of the zone? Um, you know, hey, I, I knew they were going to play zone a lot. And, you know, that that's, seems to be a little bit of a trend playing against us lately. And I, I think our guys are settling in and getting better against it. And, you know, the funny thing about zones is they're all a little different. And, you know, so you have to kind of figure out where the little pockets and openings are. And, and when, you, when you look analytically, look at them, I mean, their opponents shoot a high percentage of, of their sh total shots or three-point attempts. So I, I knew they were going to pack it in and we were going to have to shoot some threes. And we really focus on always, you know, jamming the ball inside and pounding it in there and, you know, and, and getting to the paint. But I knew we were going to have to take a lot of threes. So I think 35 three-point attempts is a lot for us, but that's what the game called for today. And, and uh, you know, our guys did a great job of knocking them down, including this guy right next to me here. Okay, we are taking questions for student athletes first, please. So right down here. Um, Alex Timo, KSL.com. Uh, uh, Kylan, what was the message in the locker room? Um, because Vaughn Beach State made it a game early on, and it was a big, it was a dogfight for most of the first half. What was the message from Coach Lloyd in the locker room that really got you guys settled in in the second half? Um, the main thing we've been talking about lately is taking one task at a time. Uh, you know, coming out in the second half, that first four minutes with our first group has been the main focus of making sure, you know, make sure if our lead is still there. Uh, maintain that or you know try to put a push um, but you know all of us did a great job coming out of the second half and staying strong no, no, no one got one Jim you don't have one for big O up here come on now you gotta how about this guy big O has been kicking ass and I'm super proud of him the way he's been playing <laughs> uh, for either Kylan or Umar uh, Nick King from Channel 3 Channel 5 in Phoenix Looked like you guys were really starting to have some fun in the second half, especially as you start on that 17-2 run in the first four minutes, basically. Um, were you able to feel a little bit, um, I guess it's easy if you, as you start to turn up that lead, but were you having fun in the second half there? Yeah, we were, because like, you know, in the second half we were playing really good defense, and I felt like our defense always dictated our offense. We get stopped, then we run fast breaks, and, and if you get stopped like that and then score, you got to celebrate. That's, that's, that's how, like, we we'll be having fun every game. Any more questions for our student athletes? Uh, we're checking with our Zoom participants to see if they have any questions for our student athletes. If you do, please ra use the raise hand button on your Zoom window. All right, not seeing any, we'll excuse our student athletes. Thank you very much. And we will now uh, open up questions for Coach Lloyd. Uh, Tommy, Alex, come up again, KSL.com. Uh, Tommy, you, what what, did, um, what was different about what was different about this year's matchup compared to last year's matchup, and what lessons did you guys take away as a coaching staff from that loss against Princeton in the first round last year that you were able to apply to today's win against Long Beach? Well, well I, I think the lesson, you know, I mean, we, we could dissect a lot of different ways, but I think the first thing you have to acknowledge is it's hard. I mean, these games are hard. I've, I've been in a lot of 116, 215 games, and no matter what you guys think, they're hard. And, and you just have to be willing to deal with that. And you have to get comfortable with hard. Because if you don't, panic can set in. And I thought our guys did a great job of you know, not letting the tournament pressure get in. And, and we, we turned it up and really focused one task at a time, made a few plays, and, and then you know, kind of flipped the script. And, and you, know, you have to make a team like that that's playing you know, with, with emotion and, and positivity. You, you got to show them the end of their season. You know, you got to give them a glimpse of like, if, if they don't start playing better, this could be it. And you got to flip the script on them. And I, and I thought we were able to do that in the second half and kind of flip the script on them a little bit. And, and then they saw the end and, and, and we didn't, um, you know, so, but they are tough games. Tommy, those first four minutes specifically, the way you guys flipped the script, what, what were you doing there? What were they doing? 
Uh, I mean, I think our guys had actually just settled into the game, and you know, we we kind of got a little more comfortable with some things we could we could run against that zone, and you know, a lot of times against the zone. Um, you know, you can have these great little X and O diagrams, but it, it comes down to your players, you know, making plays and making good decisions and, and, and creating opportunities for themselves and others. And our guys really settled in that way. And then I thought defensively, uh, you know, we were able to make a couple of plays. O got blocked a couple of shots and, you know, we were able to get out and transition and and, uh, and we feed off that stuff. You know, these you guys talking about celebrations, I mean, I mean, you're going to think I'm crazy, but that's something we practice. I mean, you have to play with joy. We practice celebrations all the time. And, uh, you know, we want we want to do things on the court that should be celebrated. We want to celebrate our teammates successes. So, you know, because I think that 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 energy builds and, and you know, so I'm, I'm happy you noticed our guys having fun. That means a lot to me. Hey, Coach, uh, Eddie Pels with AP. I know, obviously, you're friends with Coach Monson. You guys did dinner. Um, at what point are you? do you just have to set that aside? Oh, hey, with... hey, hey, make no bones about it. I wanted to kick Munz's ass. I mean, don't, 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 there's no, don't make any bones about it. We're competitors. I mean, I mean, so, you know, it's like playing against your, you know, I'm the little brother, and I've always been the little brother to all those guys. So, you know, sometimes little brother's got to fight back. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean I don't love Munz. I mean, I, I mean, I, I felt, you know, I mean, I almost do now, like tears starting to well up when I hugged him at the end of the game. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And, you know, people don't know what we go through with our families, and, and think that guy gave 17 years to Long Beach State, and they fired him without another year in his contract. So he, so he's walking out of this deal in 30 days with no benefits, no severance pay, nothing. I mean, that that's when you when you sit in my position and, and what what we put our families through. I mean, I don't think that's right. And, and that guy does not deserve that because he's a great man and he deserves another job and another opportunity. So I mean, that that's where my heart goes out to him and his family because, you know, that that's the other side. That's the stuff we talk about. We don't just talk about, you know, joking about the game and the Princeton offense, all that stuff. We talk about the real stuff. And, and so, you know, what's, what he and his family are going through is really hard right now, and I hope people understand that there's a whole other side to this business. And we know it's a tough business, but still, you know, he's got kids in college. You know, I mean, and, and like, you know, and our jobs are pretty special. They're specialty-based. Like, not a lot of them out there. So, you know, I, I, I hope... You know, things go good for him because he deserves it. Coach, uh, Davis Domestic, the Crimson. Um, Umar Bala had a double-double this evening. Not to be outdone, Caleb Love did as well. Uh, we all know Caleb is an incredible playmaker, but Caleb how impactful was his rebound into the, to the success of this team? Caleb had a double-double? Oh, my goodness. Good for him. Um, that's great. No, hey, you know, I, when Caleb's contributing in other ways, it really helps us. You know, I mean, obviously he's um, he's a pretty offensive centric player, and so we can all get fixated on that a little bit. But you know, he made a hustle play today that really stood out to me. I think he turned the ball over and went back and like blocked a, blocked a layup attempt, and and for him to do that was huge growth. I and mean, that's that's a championship effort. And so I was really proud of him. And O has been so steady the last two months. I mean, he's just uh, he's been a force um, that that's hard to deal with every day. And is and I really admire his consistency. I mean, that that's been awesome. Hey, Coach, Greg Morales, pac Network. Um, today was Kashad Johnson's ninth career NCAA tournament game, and he scores your first seven points of the second half. I know people talk about that experience in the tournament and what it means to the rest of your locker room, but when you guys went on that 7-0 run to close the first half and then come out with the big burst in the second, how much does having that real game experience mean uh, in that type of situation? Well, well it matters. And, you know, the, the thing with, with Key is – he, he's got such a special ability to lock into the moment. And, you know, the, the, the mo there's no moment too big for him because for him they're, they're all equal. They're just moments. And, and so I've, really, I've been really impressed with that. And I, I didn't realize he scored our first seven points, but I'm not surprised he did. I know he had the, a layup on the baseline I thought he got fouled on. You know, but uh, but then yeah, he must have made a three and something else. But so so yeah, I'm just it's huge, you know. And, and you know, Pella makes our first basket of three, and you know, then Caleb settled in the game, and you know, Kylan played really well today. So you know, he's their experience is rubbing off on him. So uh, it, it's great. But hey, we don't assume anything. We know whoever we play Saturday is going to be a tough game, and it's going to be a knockdown drag out, and and you know, we're going to have to put our best foot forward. Okay, uh, time for a couple more questions. We'll start right here, please. Tommy, you opened by talking about the tunnel vision you guys have and the difference between you guys and us sitting here, and I would say it applies to the fans too. And at some point in the first half, it's probably easy for people to start thinking about, oh, here we go again last year. Yeah. 
Um, it's a different cast of characters, but do you have to wonder, or is there a moment of like, I hope our guys aren't thinking like that? Well, you know, we, we, we try to talk about our guys, talk about that stuff with our guys, but human emotions are really powerful. And, and as a competitor, you just, you just have to, you have to fight those thoughts and, and, and you can't go, can't go there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, hey, you know, the, the tournament pressure deal is real, you know, and, and anybody that says it's not, you know, is, is lying to you. I mean, it, it's a real thing, and, and you know, that, that's one of the things that makes it such a fun tournament to watch, and it makes it really hard uh, hard to play in. But, um, but, you know, fortunately, I think this is my 25th time in the NCAA tournament, so I've been around it a little bit. Um, you know, and, and some of our guys have been around it a little bit, and, uh, and, you know, to be quite honest, I think we're built for it. Okay, we'll check the Zoom uh, really quickly. If anyone on the Zoom would like to ask a question to Coach Lloyd, please use the raise hand button. Okay, are there any more questions here in the room for Coach? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. We'll see you yep. Saturday. All right, we will start with an opening statement from Coach Monson. Well, um, my, my stance this week doesn't change. I'm the luckiest guy in this tournament in, in the world to get, get to, uh, to do what I got to do today uh, with these guys. And we said before the game um, that we were just going to simplify it, that we, there's three areas in a great team like this that you've got to disrupt. You know, that they're leading the, leading the country and in points in the paint, we did that. 38-32, we went. We had more points in the paint. We we said we we got to um, uh, out rebound them, and they're one of the top 10 rebounding teams, I believe, in the country. We did that. I think it was uh, 50 to 47. Okay, and then we said we got to we got to be tough enough to take good shots and take care of the ball because they turn those into into transition points. And that was the one area where, where, where we got beat in. But um, a, a team that good, you're going to have to be – your margin for error is really small, you know. But, but we, we – I was – I mean, I, I told, as I told them, there's, there's different elements in, in, in competition. You can lose, and that's unacceptable. There's no losers up here. We got beat tonight. They were better, they were better than us. They, out, they, out, they outplayed us, but they didn't out-tough us. They didn't out compete us. We're, we're really, I'm really proud of these guys, the way, the way we fought tonight. We weren't good enough today. And you have to be almost perfect in a game like this. The last five minutes of the first half, the second, first five minutes of the second half, you know, we just didn't play good enough. But 
I, I, you know, I, I, it was emotional in the locker room, but I made them look me in the eye because they got n there was no heads down because I can't be more proud. This this group needs their heads up high, and I want to thank them for the ride. Thank you, Coach. We will now open up to questions for our student athletes. Um, Alex Tibo of KSL.com. Uh, this is for all three of you, uh, Jadon, Abubakar, and AJ. Uh, as you guys look back on this incredible two week run and this season as a whole, uh, what are you all uh, going to take away from uh, this ride and from this season you guys have had together? Um, obviously, you know, we're a little hurt right now. Um, we didn't go as far as we wanted to, but we know, you know, in a few days, looking past it or looking back on it, we're going to be really proud of this group. Um, we had a lot of adversity. We had a lot of ups and downs, um, ebbs and flows, but, you know, we're a family and we stayed a family through everything. And, you know, if you saw the locker room, you would see a family. You know, we love each other. We love this game. We love coach. We love the media team. We love the janitors. We love the staff. We love the families, Mama Darcy, Maddox, McGuire, Molly McKenna. We love Sheena. You know, we love everyone. You know, all the wives, everyone who's, who's been on this ride with us, they have been absolutely complimentary to what we've been able to achieve. And, you know, you know, not at, there's only one winner at the end of this. You know, it's only going to be one team. And, you know, tonight we weren't good enough. Arizona played a, a hell of a game. They deserve to, to be in the spot they're in. Um, but, you know, we're going to look back on this fondly. And we wish, of course, we wish we would have gone farther. But this is, you know, this is a memory I'll never forget. And I know I love these guys to death, man. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm OK. Um, like I said, um, you see who loves you, or like how tired you are as a family when adversity came. And <clears throat> I think we showed that to the whole country um, two weeks ago, or a week ago when our coach got fired, you know. Um, we stayed family, we fought, and now we're here today. Obviously, we disappointed because we were trying to go further than this. But I'm happy because I know I'm living why I'm living like a good family. We fought today, and I'm really proud of the guys. I'm super proud of this whole team, this whole family, fans, this whole Long Beach Nation. I mean, this past two weeks we faced a lot of adversity, you know, with things happening with Coach and uh, us losing five games prior to this. A lot of people didn't think we even make it to this moment. They didn't think we'd make it past the first game in the conference tournament. So I'm just proud of our, all of our guys for just fighting and all the staff and fans just for believing in us as a team. And then, yeah, that's it. Uh, 562.org, uh, AJ, you know, you've been in and out of the starting lineup. You've done a little bit of everything for this team in your time at the beach and now leaving as a senior. You come into that first half off the bench and you really gave the team a spark. Can you talk about your mental approach as much as the X's and O's approach to coming into that game and kind of changing the momentum and giving you guys a lead? Uh, really, my mental going to the game is never, like, about my own stuff, you know. It's always for the team. Like, I, But credit to my teammates today, they found me open. They got me open shots. But going into every game, I don't think about scoring or like I have to get this amount of points. I just really do whatever my team need for me in that game. So whether it's defense, rebounding, guarding a five man, playing a four, it's just whatever. Whatever Coach Monson and the team needs from me, that's what I do. So that's my mindset going into every game. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times, uh, for anybody who wants to answer it. What was it like uh, kind of saying goodbye to Coach, if you will, in the, in the locker room after your final game together with him? There is no goodbye. Um, he he's created a family. You know, he brought us all here. We're all we're all here because of him. And you know, we all might not be playing for him again, but you know, we're gonna keep in touch. You know, we're gonna see him. We're gonna try to be involved as much as possible. So, you know, obviously it hurts this. You know, being our last game with him, but it's not truly a goodbye because you know, like I said, we're a family and. 
you know, that's never going to go away because, you know, love is unconditional and it don't matter how far he goes or how far I go, how far any of these two guys or any of the other 13 guys in the locker room go, it's, you know, it's forever with, with, with what we've been through. So it's not goodbye. It's just more of a I'll see you when I see you to be continued, as he said, in the locker room. AJ or Bubakar, would you like to answer that? No. It is, it, I will say, it is a thank you, though. Truly a thank you. Uh, truly, thank you, Coach, for everything, man. You've taught us a lot. You've, you've done a lot for us, more than you realize. So it's not to be continued or goodbye. It's, it's thank you. That's the biggest thing. Okay, we'll check with our Zoom participants to see if they have any questions for our student athletes. And seeing none. Are there any more questions in the room for our student athletes? Okay, we'll excuse them. Thank you very much. You want to stay here? Give me a little moral support or something. You know? huh? And now we'll open up questions for Coach. You want mine too? Huh? <laughs> ben Bolch again, Los Angeles Times. Uh, Coach, you've been at the beach a long time. You've done a lot of things. You've won a lot of games, but you know now it's basically over. What what are your emotions in this moment? Um, I'm proud, happy, uh, reflective, a range of emotions but mostly proud. I'm proud of my tenure. I'm proud of doing it the right way. I'm proud of the student athletes that came out of here as, as you know, came in as young men and left as men, came in without a college degree and left with a college degree, came in here with skill development, leaving here with skills enough to go play professionally. So I think proud is the most, and, and uh, proud of, of just, uh, of who I am. Proud of my family too, by the way. I got a shout out over there. But it's a tough couple of weeks. I couldn't imagine without them. Uh, well said, Coach. Uh, JJ Fiddler, 562.org. Um, you talking about the graduation rate and all that stuff, what college athletics is actually about. Uh, there's more kids out there who need your help. Are you done coaching? I hope not, but that's not all entire to me, you know. Um, we'll see how, what happens. Uh, I think, again, a week of very, a lot of reflection to it. Um, I, I think it, it you, know, you have to have that drive in your belly, and when somebody tells you you can't do something and, and you feel that drive in your belly, you're like, okay. You know, uh, I just feel like, you know, you, you all, you know, as competitors, as former athletes, you're always you know, looking to do it on a golf course or playing cards or something. And I got to do it with 18-year-olds at my age. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to being on the couch tomorrow and maybe, maybe you know, watching games Saturday and Sunday. But Monday, I'm going to miss this team. I'm going to miss going in with my staff and figuring out how to compete with, against somebody else, you know. It will hit me, I think, on Monday. And uh, so I, I hope I have a... A challenge, but uh, I'm I'm okay if I don't. I mean, I'm, it's not going to define me as a person. That's one thing these t two weeks have taught me. You know, my family and my friends, my players are going to de define my happiness. Uh, Coach Alex Stimmel up here at KSL.com. Um, you know, as as a guy who grew up in Hawaii and as a guy that's followed the Big West Conference for the better part of the last decade. Um, I, I can't help but I can't help but think about the the motto that the Big West has constantly hammered into everyone's head over the past four years or so. It's only the bold. I mean, how have you how have you as a coach seen that? Um, have you how have you seen that in your players that boldness the last two weeks or so? Well, I th I, th I think everybody's seen it. What have I seen? What have you seen? You know, that's that's not. That's not for me to 
That's for everybody to answer. I, I, I think they represented themselves pretty bold. I think they represented themselves and their family the right way. This university, you know, this university gave us all an opportunity, but we don't, I don't think we let them down. I, I think these guys, you know, um, uh, played for the right, the right way for the right reasons. Coach, uh, Eddie Pelzer, um, you were talking about Monday is going to be a little rough. Mm -hmm. um, you've been going at this for years and years. I mean, is there anything that you have wanted to do outside <laughs> of basketball that maybe, you know, you'll at least maybe have a couple days or weeks to, to do? I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, again, I've got experience at everything at my age. I've also got experience at being fired. And, I got fired on November 28th in, in, in my eighth year at, at the University of Minnesota. And I remember taking the kids at 40 below or whatever it was to the bus station, to the bus stop with all the other moms. And, you know, just trying to hang on to my marriage because then I had to go home and it's just her and I all day long. And uh, getting a, get, get coaching basketball was a whole lot easier than, than raising those kids. And uh, so, you know, we, her and I did go to – I always mess it up. Where would we go for Cancun for a couple of days? But uh, and that was great for us. But f for me personally, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing I would rather do than what I did today. You know, I've been joking about it. I'm, I'm doing it for free, uh, and I think that's really a, a great way to go out because uh, all these coaches, as I've said all week, would do it for free. But to be able to get to do it for free. I think is is a statement to to my my career as far as you know we're we're well compensated we've we've you know I think at Minnesota maybe there was a couple of days where I didn't want to get out of bed but these jobs are so much fun and that's something that that I realized through this um, this these last couple of weeks is how lucky I am to have, be able, able to represent our university that I believe in players that I believe in, family and friends. And you know, my motto for 30 years as a head coach, 25, whatever it is, every year I've given the players the first day of practice a, a bracelet they, they, where it says mindset on it. And it's what our program's based on, is having the right mindset. M is for meaningful, I is for indivisible, N is for no excuses, D is for discipline, E is for excellence, and T is for toughness and thankfulness. And today was a T game. It was about toughness and thankfulness. And I, if I want to go anything, I, I'm just thankful for the, the ride I've gotten. As I've said, it's been a heck of a ride. I knew, it was, I knew the car was leased. I knew this week it didn't even have insurance to it. But I got to drive a, a heck of a car, and I've got to give it back now. But I'm hoping I can drive again. If I can't, I'll walk. Because I've, I've got places I can go. I can walk to the sunset or I can walk the dog, or I can walk with my kids. I've got, you know, I said that last week, I'm not Jim Harbaugh, I'm better than that. Okay, I've got it even better. Okay, we will have three more questions, two in the room, starting with you right here, and one on Zoom. Coach, uh, Alex Fahar with the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, what has it been like for you, um, just kind of getting all the support that you've gotten from your coaching peers um, who, who do the job, who have come out and been supportive of you or, or even said what happened to you was kind of unfair? Well, that's what, that's what friends do. I mean, all of us in life, you know, when your friends are, have adversity or something, you, 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 come to their, you come to their side, you know. They don't even, they don't even know the whole story sometimes. It doesn't matter because, you know, we love each other. And as I told Tommy at the end there, you know, if it's got to be my last game, at least it's with family, you know, and, you know, if, if we're the one that jump starts him to go win a national championship, I can always, you know, let him know that I, I helped, you know, because family helps each other. So, you know, but they helped me through a tough time this week, not just in the media, but, you know, behind the scenes. But nobody's helped me more than my family. And, uh, and those guys are family, you know. Uh, co Coaching is a very tight-knit um, community. And... Uh, not just Mark Few and Tommy Lloyd, but I've gotten 50 or 60 Division I head coach texts in the last two weeks, and uh, uh, it, it means a lot. 
you know, just like everybody else when you're going through stuff. You know, it's the people that you can lean on that they, they get you through it. And it's been easy these two weeks because I've had so many people to get me through it. It starts with, you know, having somebody like a wife that, that understands the profession, that understands what you're going through. And I appreciate what she's been there from my side. I, you know, I had my, I had um, pr um, press credentials for my two girls and, and my wife last Thursday, last Friday, last Saturday. And then today, because, you know, as the kids can tell you, you know, as they told you, it's, this is a tight-knit family, and I wanted my family to represent theirs and everybody else. I didn't have to use it Thursday. They didn't have to use them Friday. They did come in Saturday, and it was great to be with my family today it was, uh, as this journey, uh, as I said, uh, will to be continued, but, but ended temporarily today. You talked about wanting to appreciate this after you know your run with Gonzaga in '99. It looked like you were doing that at the end, even all the way to the end. With uh, you know you were clapping when Jeffrey made his free throw. You got your son in the game, blowing kisses to the fans on your way off the court. Do you feel did, was that? Did you feel that out there that you were soaking this in? Yeah, yeah. Because I always say that one of my biggest regrets of my career is the 1999. Gonzaga lead eight run and they're like, how could you regret that? And the reason why I regret it is because it happened as the second year as my head, as a head coach. And I just, I, I was naive thinking that this is normal, that this, that this was going to happen again and again. And I was disappointed we didn't win a national championship. You know, 25 years later, I got a different perspective. Okay. I got a different understanding of how difficult that is and what a honor and what a, a privilege it is to get to this tournament and how much it takes from coaching to luck to to uh, uh, injury free situations and I, I I absolutely soaked up every minute today and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to remember it for a lifetime I just hope it's a long time that I've I got left to, to, to remember it <laughs> okay we have the last one in the room right here uh, hey, hey Dan, Dan. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Brennan Quinn from The Athletic, uh, there was kind of intense reaction today to some comments from your athletic director about kind of crediting the run in the NCAA tournament to the firing. And just need to ask you if you have any response to, to that. No. If, if, if it helped, then I'm really happy we did it because I wouldn't trade it for the job or any other job. I've said that all along. You know, if, if that's what spurred it, that's great. But, you know, I'm not... We'll never know, because <laughs> that's how it played out. So we'll never know if it did or not. So I, it's not really worth talking about. But okay, then Thank one, you. one final question from Dan Totoro on Zoom. Coach Dan Tortoro, Wake Up Call DT.com. You've let us see into your history and, and like you were talking about your emotion and just how much this job has meant to you and other jobs. From the seat of of being a head coach, how would you describe the opportunity to help raise young men, not just coach young men, but to raise them and the impacts that this coaching profession has had on your life? Oh, it's, that's a great question and it's enormous. I mean, I, uh, it's, it's an enormous responsibility, but the, with, with responsibility comes gratitude and satisfaction. And, and you know, I, I, I was born into this. My, my father was a great coach. He was national coach of the year. and. I think 1980 or 79, right in there. And uh, uh, he, n he never wanted me to go into coaching because of so many ups and downs. And uh, when I felt, finally told him that I was doing it for me, he, then he got a little bit excited. But um, uh, it, I, my, with my boys, if they want to do it, I'm like, what a great, what a great life I've had. Uh, like I said, I don't wake up in the morning with an alarm. I wake up excited to, to go see the, the guys. and. Yet, as you said, developing student athletes is a tremendous uh, responsibility. And I promise parents on rec in recruiting, if you trust me with your son, uh, I'll treat him like my own kids. And I think I've lived uh, uh, true to that mantra. You know, I'm, I, I, I hold them accountable. And, and this, this group is really, you know, not said enough. They had a 3.2 GPA last semester. These are, these are there's no NIL money at, at Long Beach State right now. Th these guys are student athletes that do it the right way on and off the court. 
And I'm proud to, to be the one that, that helped him guide it that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach. No jokes Appreciate today. You, Sorry. Appreciate your time. Congratulations. I wasn't in a joking mood quite as bad. Yesterday was more fun. <laughs> <laughs>